Hi, my name is Cindy Howard and I work for the Center of Hope and we are here today um, to honor a very special woman. Um, her name is Anita Anderson and we'll start off today um, with doing that and then we'll let you know a little bit about, more about the Center of Hope. Anita Anderson started 42 years ago working um, in a grassroots effort to start the Center of Hope, a place for parents of people um, who had disabilities at that time um, to change the way of life for those people. And uh, she was instrumental in getting this group started and now we serve 150 people vocationally and another 200 families either with their children um, or adults in recreational and other day settings. And this is all started because of Anita, and we're here today at, um, to make sure that she is remembered always by um, dedicating the Center of Hope building um, as the Anita Anderson Center. And Pat Laurie, um, part of our um, board of directors, will present her with a plaque. Okay, you can see it's a beautiful plaque. And I just have to say one thing. When Anita first came in, she made a very interesting comment, and that was, where are all these people 40 years ago? And I thought that was quite inter uh, interesting because they're even either in an institution or in somebody's closet, okay? Now, you want me to read this one? Okay. Anita, we're going to give you this plaque. It says the Anita Anderson Center. Hey, you know, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Through her convictions and grass, grassroots efforts, she and other parents began an effort that has grown to include people of all abilities participating in every aspect of our communities. And this is from the Center of Hope, and no one deserves it more than you, Amina. Thank, Thank, Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you from all the parents through the years. You know, well, like I said, when I came in, it was somewhat emotional because a lot of the people here are a lot older than 40 and I kept thinking to myself where were they 40 years ago mm -hmm. you know and where would they be today without oh, like oh I'm mm -hmm. sure someone else would have uh, nobody else picked it up picked up the ball at that point though did they no well mm -hmm. somebody had and how many doors that were probably oh yes closed to you shut in your face doors you know, shut in my face telephone calls uh, I made calls and they'd hang up the phone. They just didn't want to hear about it, you know. But now it's, I think it's marvelous that they can all congregate. They're with their peers. Yeah. They're all having a good time. You can tell by listening to them, watching them. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Why don't we introduce to you uh, Linda Kanoya, who is the president of our board of directors, and she's been around for at least 25 years, um, working very hard to help the Center of Hope grow as well. And members of Anita's family are with us too, and Bob, and Linda, and Lisa are parts of her family, and they're also very proud of their mother's accomplishments yes. um, with the Center of Hope as well, and we're pleased that they can be a part of this event today. Uh, today, the Center of Hope um, has grown um, very large. We have um, yeah, three other buildings where people are working in day programs, where they are um, actually doing work for businesses, for we work for 20 different companies. Um, we have um, 60 to 70 people at any one time who are out working in jobs in their community with, the, with any support that they need until they understand and can do their job independently. We have another 40 children who um, are able to be integrated into regular camp settings in boys and Girl Scout troops and in the Y and all um, typical activities of children through the efforts of the Center of Hope. And um, we also have um, two adult day health centers now. Um, one here in Southridge where people who need some medical care but need a day program can come together they also go out into the communities to um, participate with everybody around them. We have a new program out in Wales that also are um, people who are in an adult day setting. Uh, we uh, cover at least an 18 town area in southern Worcester County, all the way from uh, the Blackstone Valley area out to Wales and Palmer in that area. Um, we are um, happy to help anybody who 
um, is looking for services for family members with disabilities, our phone number is 764-4085. Look at you started. Look at you started. Can I say one thing to you? Excuse me, sure. Um, Anita Anderson is my mother-in-law. I've known her like 30 years now, and she's the most giving person I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're also going to be seeing with this tape another tape that was um, actually taken uh, two years ago. It was a 40th anniversary party. Uh, that's where we started um, really looking closely at our history for all of us uh, youngsters who haven't been around for the whole 40 years. And we learned um, about all the accomplishments of many different people at that Whoa. time. We um, took uh, pictures of still pictures and newspaper articles to um, let people understand what the center um, was about through those years. And um, there are some changes that have been made since um, this tape um, was aired two years ago. So we want to just let you know that right now Tradewinds is still a very um, big program in this area, but we're not running that program, but you're, that's still available for people. We have more recreational programs and, and the adult day health service that we've changed to. We no longer have a clothing store, but we um, do help people um, in an emergency setting still. Um, if people need clothing or food, um, if they're, someone in their family has a disability. Uh, any um, questions that you have about that tape in particular, you can also call about. All I can say is I certainly never expected anything like this. And I want to thank you people so much. We want to thank you so much. Yeah. You know, I said to you earlier, I have a daughter who's 28, and things wouldn't have happened. Even when, 28 years ago, when I was looking yeah. for services for Denise, they gave me phone numbers that were updated. Yeah. Yeah. So, But this is where my daughter started um, at school at two and a half in the um, preschool program. That's great. So it's, it's only to efforts that you did many years before. So thank you again. Good morning. Welcome. You'll always be remembered in this building and through the program. And, and it's a thank great you. honor for Anita that she deserves very, very much. We just want to close now. Uh, thanks very much to um, our access channel that uh, Gwen and Pam are here um, to do this for us. Um, so that Anita can be remembered. Thanks very much. Anybody who wants to get involved um, in any way, in a volunteer position or um, in any other capacity, please call us. We're at 764 408 Thank you.
We're here to honor Anita Anderson today. Anita is the person that planted this seed, the center of hope, which has blossomed into this huge uh, tree of services to people with disabilities. And we want to thank her today. Uh, for starting this uh, agency, starting this movement uh, here in the South Central area. Uh, we have a plaque here for Anita, the Anita Anderson Center. We are dedicating this building to Anita, and it says, through her convictions and grassroots efforts, she and other parents began an effort that has grown to include people of all abilities participating in every aspect of our communities. Anita, thank you very, very thank much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm turning around. That's okay. It's okay to get him on. It is. It's okay. You want to get a picture? Yeah, yeah. If the South Virginia gets here, we'll do it again. Okay. Well, hey, listen. Yeah, that's right. Get a lot of practice. Everybody look, man. Smile. One more time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. pictures you are seeing now are of people in the 1950s who started a grassroots movement to change the lives of their children with mental retardation. The Southern Worcester County Association for Retarded Children was begun and the Center of Hope Nursery School 
in a building donated by the American Optical was born. Through the years, the school grew and flourished, and parents kept educating the public about disabilities. In the 1970s, Friday night woodworking and arts and crafts classes and dances attracted as many as 100 adults. Advocacy, teaching, and fundraising were going on constantly as they are today. As children went off to the public schools after the enactment of Chapter 766 and new people joined, a new goal of the need for respite care became apparent. Jim Howard and Jerry Fillion, along with the board, worked towards this goal that ca came true in 1987. The respite house at 140 Chapin Street, Southbridge, is a home where parents can feel safe, leaving their child or adult with a disability for an emergency or a needed break. Come along with us and see how much our agency has grown in the last 11 years. This is the site of our main offices now for the center. The programs grew out of the Walnut Street building 10 years ago, so Jim rented a small amount of space in the American Optical Lensdale plant. We have now outgrown this site and rent space from the Boniface brothers on Foster Street as well. Here we are at the original Center of Hope building, which currently provides a setting for about 30 persons who need a day program, but also have medical or other needs. They are known as Southbridge Adult Day Health Services. In this warm and homey atmosphere, people participate in many social and recreational activities along with practicing daily activity skills and having their meals together. Educational programs provide many work opportunities for about 130 persons with different disabilities. With training and opportunity, some persons learn to work first in a sheltered setting, then can move on to outside placements and eventually move to jobs in the community with job coaches and other supports until they are able to work independently. Additionally, through a subsidiary corporation, 50 to 75 persons from the community are integrated through our work sites, providing a more normal work environment, as well as more business growth abilities. Our thrift shop and cafeteria pro provide additional training for future placement as well as a great service to our community. This program is Tradewinds Community Clubhouse, a transitional setting for about 100 people struggling with mental illness to help them get back into the workforce and the community with training and new job skills and support by staff and other members of the clubhouse. Rachel and Ben Reyes began Special Olympics with 11 participants in 1987, which has since grown to be the largest in the region, including over 100 athletes participating in integrated track and field, bowling, unified fishing, unified softball, and senior sports teams. When you see these faces, you know how important these achievements are 
to all of the athletes involved. We're also involved in integrating 40 or more children into recreational activities, including Camp Ament and Conference Center and Camp Foskett's of Charlton, and 4-H Camp Marshall and Spencer. Children may also participate in after-school clubs, such as the YMCA, Boys Girls Club, Kung Fu, and many more, including our Youth Teen Club in Oxford, for children of all abilities who work together doing community service projects. Civic groups and businesses also sponsor fishing derbies and other events like horseback riding. We have become involved also in Christmas and emergency fund giving for people who traditionally fall between the cracks each year. We also sponsor many trainings, conferences, family support groups, and a newly forming self-advocates group. Social opportunities include bi-monthly dances and holiday parties put on by us and many other clubs and groups in the area. All through the year, Many trips are taken to places of interest around New England. Fun and fundraising has been combined in many events in 40 years, including two family fun fairs in carnival-like atmospheres meant to raise money and also public awareness for our agency. These were a lot of fun, but they were a lot of work too. We also received some donations from local civic clubs and businesses and rely on many volunteers from the community to keep our programs going. We also know that training in the legislative process and family members meeting with our state representatives and senators is of vital importance in keeping our funding sources. We are moving into our 10th year of level funding from the state, even though costs continue to rise. As Representative Paul Colios reminds us every year, we are the ones who have to let all people know what the needs are of persons with disabilities. People are coming out of institutions to work and live in the communities where they should be. We need to meet those changes with the same commitment to advocacy as our founding members were in the 1950s and through the decades. We need people in all areas of the community to share our mission to better everyone's lives.